Welcome to Dragon Slayer Update, the only show dedicated to Howard Community College Athletics. This month, Region 20 Lacrosse takes center stage. We'll preview the Track and Field National Championship and introduce you to two international lacrosse players in this month's Dragon Close-Up. We'll start with men's lacrosse. From 2006 to 2008, Howard and Essex was the nation's best rivalry. Since then, Essex has won eight straight over the Dragons in convincing fashion. Coach Sinise's Dragons travel to Baltimore in search of the program's first road win against Essex. Will Howard reignite the rivalry, or will Essex hand the Dragons another double-digit loss? Bruce Hoosier anchors our men's lacrosse coverage. Thanks, Diane. I'm here with lacrosse analyst Chris Carey. Howard Essex is a special game. Pete Poyon experienced the rivalry firsthand. Well, we played them four times in the two years, and it was two and two, and whoever was at home won, and it's usually by a goal or two. So uh, I'd never really been part of like a rivalry that, that was that close that came down to what field you're at. Essex has taken the drama out of the last eight meetings, outscoring the Dragons 151 to 56. Chris, how can Howard score the upset? Well, Bruce, the offense needs to keep control of the ball, work it around, and take good shots. Defensively, they need to play tight and aggressive against Essex, force them to take bad shots and not give up easy goals. Essex enters the game ranked second in the nation. Their only blemish is a one-goal loss to Onondaga. The Knights have not lost to a Region 20 opponent in four years. In 2010, Essex hired former Howard head coach Sean Burke, and he's 5-0 against his old team. Chris, Tony Rossi will be a crucial part of the Knights offense. Absolutely. Rossi is the most well-rounded offensive player for Essex. He leads the team in points and is just as good a scorer as he is a feeder. If I'm Coach Burke, I want Rossi to have the ball as much as possible. Howard and Essex face off next. Settled six on six situation. Matthew Morton is all alone up top and he fires a haymaker. This is a great shot by Morton, recognizing the room he had and putting one in the net. Essex is running a spread offense, trying to keep Howard off balance and find the easy goal. Essex scores two unanswered and ties the game. Howard's man up unit works it to Brock Wendt. He makes them pay. We're tied at five. It's non-releasable, so Howard's man up unit stays on the field. Howard is working the ball around. Nick Wynn finds Zach Wheeler, 6-5 Dragons. This is a perfect example of great ball movement. Getting the defense out of position, allowing for an easy goal for the Dragons. After three Howard face-off violations, the Knights' extra man unit goes to work. Balistrari does the honors. Watch number 25 in Maroon, Ricky Dubois. Dubois gets a one-minute non-releasable penalty. Howard's man-down defense doesn't move to the ball. The slide is off and Balistrari delivers a bouncer. The excellent unassisted effort from Rossi gives Essex a two-goal lead. This is Nick Wynn, one-on-one -on -one with All-American Josh Ruffalo. Ruffalo has Wynn by the armpit. Wynn charges to the cage and finishes. That shows how good a player Nick Wynn is. He's dodging through two defenders and gets the goal with one hand. Ansi Kai Salmi looks to take advantage of the unsettled situation. He dodges left and buries it low. The freshman out of Finland ties the game. Two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Howard receives a 30-second illegal procedure penalty. Man up opportunity for Essex. Marcus Dietz scans the field. Goes to Rossi. The Knights regain the lead. Hat trick for the sophomore out of Calvert Hall. Fourth quarter, settled six on six situation. Kai Salmi attacks the short stick and finds the back of the net. Kai Salmi does a great job of drawing that extra defender, allowing Wheeler to get enough room to score. Howard regains the lead. Ensuing faceoff, the Dragons send Frank Preston to the faceoff X. He's up against Clay Johnson. Johnson wins it. Johnson shoots. Big time save from Garrett Conaway. Six minutes remaining. Howard has a one goal lead. Essex long pole. Drew Cormode forces a turnover and wins the ground ball. Three minutes to play. Sam Price sends a long ball to Tony Rossi. He flies through the midfield. Rossi ties the game. That's why Essex wants him to have the ball, because he's able to move quickly and finish the shot. Balistrari draws the slide. Short stick midi, David Salter knocks it loose. 
Howard and Essex battle it out for possession. The official stops play. Signals possession. It's Howard's ball. Hold on. Another official rules that Essex had possession and called timeout. Rossi draws the slide. Feeds it to Ian McDonald. Conaway makes the save. The official calls a push and gives Essex another possession. A great save, but a tough call for the Dragons. 90 seconds on the clock. Howard puts two poles on Rossi. He gets his hands free and gives Essex the lead. Ensuing faceoff, Kaisami versus Johnson. Kaisami wins it cleanly and takes it into the box. Johnson hustles back on defense and breaks up the shot. Essex comes back to win. Let's go to Matt Stovall for the Dragon Sports Radio Post Game Report. How would you assess your performance out there? Uh, I think I did well. Um, I feel like I could have did uh, a little better on some of the ground balls, but um, uh, I did my best. I think I think I gave it a good effort as a team. We gave it a good effort. Uh, we just came a little short. Brock playing midfield. What did you see that allowed you all to get 13 goals against Essex today? Uh, we really took it to their short short stick midfielders and we tried to stay away from their poles because we know they can play and we tried to attack from behind a lot because we knew that's where their weakness was and it worked and we just had a lot of turnovers on stupid passes and stuff like that so Kevin this game was real close what do you think was the deciding factor in this one sad to say I say I, I say the refs kind of got us at the end but uh I say I say turnovers uh, uh, throwing the ball back in the middle of the field instead of rolling back giving it back to the goalie or uh, throwing it to the box man this is just turnovers. That was a downfall. Brock, this is, chances are, not the last time we'll see CCBC Essex. Uh, Region 20 tournament is still coming up. Um, how do you feel you can improve on your performance today and, and get them again? We can definitely just play smarter. We do a lot of the same things we did this game, and we should be able to take it to them. Gentlemen, great effort out there today. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. It's a pleasure to welcome head coach Ken Sinisi. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Assess your team's performance against CCBC Essex. Uh, going into that contest, we knew that uh, based on watching them play and um, seeing scouting them, we felt like that we matched up really well against them. Um, and the, the important thing for us was to, you know, almost like once we got hit, it's kind of make sure we're hitting back. Um, so that because they went up on us two nothing, and we were able to uh, respond and go up three two. So. You know, it's always like when you're, when you're playing a game and you're watching a game, um, you're never as good or as bad as you think you are at the end when you're actually evaluating the game. Um, so I felt like, you know, we played hard against them. We did some smart things. But after evaluating, we had 20 turnovers. So um, that kind of disappointed me uh, because I think we let that one slip away from us. But I think the great thing for our program was that we were able to kind of bring down that mystique a little bit. Um, and our guys believed that uh, we, we belong at the top of the uh, nationally. So uh, I think it's a great step for us and hopefully we get to see them again. Now you lost three one goal games this year. What is it going to take to close those games out? I think it's going to, honestly, I think it's winning one of those games. I think it's being an experience where you're faced with that again and guys believe in, um, but also we have to be smart. You know, we played Navy, uh, we were up on them 8-5 with about six minutes to go in the game. And we had the game, but we didn't play smart. We got to understand the situation. We got to understand when do we really push the ball, when do we slow it down. So it's, you know, the more experience our guys get out there, and you got to keep in mind, a lot of our players are first year guys. Uh, we are, two of our starting midfields are all freshmen. Um, so playing at this level is new to them. So it's, uh, I think it's really being faced with that again um, and being able to be smart and understand the situation and then kind of learning from what we weren't able to do prior to that and then kind of hopefully execute it and finish it out. Now, what do you like about this year's team? This year's team uh, is, is an awesome group. Uh, there's a, you know, a lot more passion there with these guys. Um, these guys have bought into what we're trying to do. Um, they really care about uh, each other. They care about getting better each day. That's the one thing that I see about this group is that each time out in practice, uh, you know, we have days where guys are fooling around. That's going to happen. Uh, but for the most part, guys have a goal. And, and the exciting part for our team this year, we have more guys this year uh, that really want to go on and play after they leave here. So every day is important to them. Um, and some of like the you know there's some of the you know the I would say the atmosphere around practice is uh, very positive. 
Um, and I think you can kind of see it when they're playing in the games. Now, do you like where your team is right now? I do. I mean, I, you always want to be, uh, I'd like to take some of those one goal games away, but in terms of where we are, we control our own destiny. I feel like uh, we have a good, you know, we have a tough, couple of tough games coming up with some good opponents, and I feel like uh, we're the better team, um, but I also feel like, you know, we've got to go out there and play and, and, and show it and earn it. Now, what's it going to take to beat Anne Arundel? For us to beat Anne Arundel, uh, we, I, th I think we have more depth than they do. Um, you know, watching them on film, seeing them play, um, they have some talented players on the attack end, the midfield. Um, I think we, uh, you know, in each position, I think we are stronger. Um, it's just going to come down to uh, they play a slower type tempo game. So it's going to be not falling into that. You know, we've got to be able to kind of dictate the pace. Uh, if we dictate the pace to them, um, I think it's going to take them out of their comfort zone. I also think the face-offs are very important for us, and uh, we have one of the top face-off guys in the region with Frank Preston. He's done an unbelievable mm -hmm. job. Um, so I think it's kind of like taking them out of their comfort zone and kind of dictating what we want to do to them. Howard takes on Anne Arundel next. Let's go back to Bruce Hoosier. Howard enters the game ranked ninth in the country. Nick Wynn leads the Dragons offense. Chris, describe Nick's game. Nick is a good, smart player. He has great speed, great stick skills, and a good shot. He also has a great vision of the field to not only know when to shoot, but when to feed as well. Nick needs to step up and play his A game, as I'm sure he will attract the top defender. And Arundel is coming off a big upset over Suffolk, a team that defeated Howard in the season opener. The Pioneers also beat Brookdale, another program that beat Howard in March. Coach Sinisi mentioned that Anne Arundel wants to slow down the tempo. Anne Arundel knows when Howard has the opportunity to go, they go hard. They're going to want to keep the ball out of Howard's offensive hands. When the Pioneers have the ball, they want to control the clock. Anne Arundel takes on Howard next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First quarter, extra man opportunity for Anne Arundel. Marshall Meyer sets up Carson Beckett for the open look and he sticks it past the keeper. Alex Hutchinson looks to get above goal line extended. Hutchinson willing to pay the price as he extends the Pioneers lead to three. Howard's man up unit takes the field. Kai Salmi to win. The Dragons come up short. Anne Arundel is really controlling the tempo. They're using a spread offense, working the ball around, then finding an open player to take the shot. The timer is on. Anne Arundel has 30 seconds to get a shot on goal. Steven Anderson takes it into the box, gives it to Sean Johnston. He improves his angle, takes a shot, it's off the pipe. Third quarter, Nick Wynn keeps his head up, scans the field, passes to Aaron Foster. Behind the back shot, it's good. What a great pass by Nick Wynn to find Foster coming across the goal. A great pass and an even better finish. Howard is running a man cover defense, designed to have the furthest person from goal open. Sean Johnson connects with Carson Beckton and he puts it away. Johnson comes around, looking like he's going to pass, then turns to take the shot. A great no-look goal by Anne Arundel. Great move by Wynn, ducking out then in to get the goal. Anne Arundel wins the ensuing faceoff. Beckin flies by Howard's middies. Unsettled opportunity for the Pioneers. Beckin, high to low, he scores! And Arundel's man up unit takes the field. Eric Crosby lets it rip. They exchange penalties. Extra man opportunity for Howard. Nick Wynn puts himself on the board again! Goal number five for the freshman out of Glen Elg High School. David Salter sends it in the direction of Wynn. Here come the Dragons in transition. Win feeds it to Zach Wooten. Big time stick save from Pastrana. When Anne Arundel had the ball, they were able to control the tempo and keep it out of Howard's hands. Extra man face off win for Alex Sipkowski. Robinson to Johnson. This one's over. Let's go to Mylon Ward for the Dragon Sports Radio post game report. How do you guys feel? How do you feel you guys play defensively as a team? Um, I mean, we didn't play bad defensively. In the first half, our offense played pretty poor. Our goalie stayed strong, our defense stayed pretty strong. And I mean, well, we only hold them to like 13 goals, something like that. That's not bad. Our offense just needs to produce more. This is a pretty big game for you guys. How do you think it's going to be able to uh, turn over and help you guys in the next game? Um, you know, nothing comes easy. We got to get refocused uh, tomorrow, pretty much right now. We got to get ready for Hartford on Saturday, and we got to turn this around. What's your team's uh, mindset going into the tournament? Um, 
first we need to make the tournament, so we really need to get that W on Saturday and then just go one game at a time after that. One game at a time. That's all I got to do. And so what do you think the focus and practice tomorrow will be? Getting better. Offensively, defensively, hustle, everything. We got to get better and start tomorrow. For a Dragon's Layer update, I'm Mylon Ward. Now it's time for women's lacrosse. Coach Carey's Dragons travel to Hartford for a top five matchup. The Dragons are led by Maddie Pullman. Chris, describe Maddie's game. Maddie is a dynamic player with excellent stick skills. She can play both ends of the field, but truly excels in the attack end. She has a great shot and is excellent on draw control. She is the quarterback on the Dragons offensive end. The Fighting Owls have won three of their last four and will look to make a statement against Howard. Seven players have scored nine or more goals for Hartford. Chris, how do the Dragons plan to slow down the well-balanced attack? They hope to shut down Sarah LeBron, leader in scoring for Hartford. Dragons want to settle in on defense and deny any open space to goal. Hartford has a lot of firepower, but so do the Dragons. Ball control will be vital in this matchup. Howard and Hartford take the field next. Brittany Cudmore passes to Sierra Sattler, evades defenders, takes the shot and scores. Colleen Chassain makes Howard pay, taking it to Rachel Donovan for the score to go up 4-0. Chassain with a free position, fakes right, shoots left. That's a tough shot for any goalie to save. Quinta Collins passes in front to Maddie Pullman. What a great save for Hartford's goalie. Most can't save shots right on the doorstep like that. Lisa Don showing her speed, races past Hartford defenders, fires a shot past Shiflet. Great perseverance on the ball, seeing it all the way through to the goal. Free position play for Hartford. Sadler extends the lead to 11-3. Chassain showing off her skills, outruns defenders, passes to Emily Nosek. The shot is good. Hartford sticks are way too high and in Shaw's face. That creates a very dangerous situation in women's lacrosse. Shaw makes him pay with a mighty shot over the goalie's head in for the score. Dejen Diane powers her way downfield, fires and scores. Sam Wilson fighting to the end, keeps it, takes it to the net, denied by Maggie Shiflet. Wilson again with a free position play this time, wouldn't be denied, slams it home for the goal. Unfortunately, Harford was moving the ball well against the Dragons. They were able to find all the shots they wanted and played a good defensive game. Harford wins, 16-9 is your final. Joining me in the studio is head coach Diana Carey. Welcome coach. Thank you. Assess your team's performance against Hartford. Well, it was a very tough game. Uh, we've played Hartford now three times. Uh, we've beat them the first two times and it's very hard to play any team three times and win. Um, unfortunately, we had had a game the day before. Um, I have been plagued with injuries this year. And uh, literally, I think the girls just did not come ready to play. They were tired, they were beat up, and um, it just didn't go our way. I uh, give credit to Hartford, though. I thought they played a very, very good game. Um, but it was a very physical game, and I think it wore our kids down. Now, the physical play, what do you say to your kids when officials allow physical play? Well. Um, First of all, I'm the coach, so I let them tell them that I'm the one who will be addressing things to the officials, and they should just play to the whistle. So if uh, you know the, if the uh, officials are allowing uh, rough play to happen, you've just got to keep playing and play to that whistle. And if you know you have to take a dive because you really feel like it's too much, go ahead and do so. But I'm the one who's going to address it with the officials. Now concussions and injuries have taken a toll on your yes. team. So how do you? prepare for the rest of your season? Well, it's very difficult because uh, concussions are very serious and we now have had three on our team, um, basically from very rough physical play with stick checks to the head. Um, so it, it's, it, it's tough for us. I mean, we have to adjust and we have to move people around. Um, but more importantly, I just want these girls to be healthy because when you have a concussion, not only can you not play in the field, but it's very difficult to do your schoolwork. And so, you know, we want to limit that as much as possible. But, you know, we're, we're adjusting and, uh, you know, we'll make the best out of it. Luckily, the girls are supporting each other, so it's, it's, it's a good thing. So, Harford, you've played them three times. Mm -hmm. Chances are you might see them again in the region tournament. Yes. How are you going to prepare for this? Well, we're going to do a little bit of an adjustment. We've adjusted our um, defense already. Um, we were doing a, a, one of our schemes was to press out. 
um, but we realized that actually Hartford is faster than us. So, and particularly with our injuries, so we're going to remove that um, defensive plan and uh, we're implementing a new one, which I think will be effective. We were face guarding one of their players. I think we're going to drop off of that since they do have too many um, sort of weapons uh, and I don't think that face guarding one person is going to be helpful. So we're going to play a little bit more of a zone, um, going to play a little bit more packed in, try to not let them come in without being double teamed. Now, what I remember earlier was you told me this is a more defensive team, yes, and are. yet you are scoring goals like crazy. Well, we're, we're getting them from uh, you know six and seven different people each game, which is a key um, because you just don't want to have one person doing all of the uh, all of the scoring. That's too easy to defend. So they're stepping up, but they're still we're, we've got some kinks we still have to work on. But we're we're getting there. And I think last year Onondaga won this yes, whole thing. Yes, they're a very strong program. So you had a, a little bit of a chance with them this year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How did yes. you measure Well, we, we, held, uh, we held our own, certainly the first half. Um, the second half, I think that we got gassed. Um, I don't think that the girls were you know, prepared to run the way they can run. And, and boy, can they run. So um, one thing that we have to do when you have a team that isn't as fast as others is that's when you have to start passing and changing the field. If you change the field, you're going to have to make the other team have to work twice as hard. So hopefully we'll wear them down. Good luck, Coach, the rest of the season. Thank you very much, Diane. And I hope you make it to Nationals. So do I. Up next, Steve Musselman discusses the Track and Field National Championship. Dragon's Lair Update. We'll be back after a short break. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. Howard Community College is hosting the NJCAA Track and Field Nationals beginning Thursday, May 9th. My next guest is track and field co-head coach Steve Musselman. Welcome, Coach. Thank you, Diane. How excited are you about this year's team? Very excited. Um, as, as you know, I started the program 20, 27 years ago, and this is by far our, our, our log, largest team and our most talented team. We, we have just about every event covered, and, and there's a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, a lot of kids are working hard, and we're very excited about the potential this year. And we read that. Men's track is ranked number one in the nation with the NJCAA polls. How does that make you feel? It makes us feel very positive that, that people recognize the good things that we're doing here. And it also puts a good target on our back <laughs> come May that uh, people are going to look for us. Howard has always been known to have a quality program. And now people are aware that we have a lot of depth this year and, and we'll be a contender for the title come May. Talk to us a little bit about that depth. We have in the jumps, we have Darius Bell, who transferred in from Sacramento. He, he wanted to make a change in his life, and he found out about us, us at Howard. Right now, he's the top leader in the, in the high jump, the triple jump, and the long jump. So that's 30 points right there. We had two quality throwers come in, Chris Nash and Peter Collins. They are also the top two throwers in three of the categories at Nationals. The sprinters are always doing well. In middle distance and distance, we've always had a sp strong program. In 800 meters, we have the top two performers in, in the nation right now on our campus. Then, of course, our, our milers and distance runners, Phil Dinku and Andrew Parlett, returning All-Americans, will help us out in the longer races. And all, in our relays, we're always tough in the relays, and our goal is to sweep all three relays this year. What is it going to take to take home the national championship trophy? Our main focus right now, get to the finals of your events. They'll, the eight people go to the finals in the run events, nine to the field events. We want to get as many people we can in the finals and then let the, the competitiveness go from there. If we get like two or three people in each event, we'll win. So how does a volunteer go and decide that I want to, I want to volunteer here at Howard? What do they have to do? The best thing would be to go to our website, howardcc.edu. Look for the, the link for athletics, and on that page on the left-hand side, there'll be a little link that will say NJCA National Meet, and all the information will be on there. Or else they can call my number, 443-518-4626, uh, and I'll put them in touch with Coach Hanlon, who will coordinate the volunteers. Good luck, Coach, on this year's Nationals. Thank you very much, Diane. 
The men's lacrosse team has more of an international flair this year, thanks to two athletes who've come across the Atlantic to play at HCC. Let's meet them in this month's Dragon Close-Up. I am Ansi Kaisalmi. I am from Turku, Finland. I'm Malta Tautsen and I'm from uh, Hamburg, Germany. Ansi and Malta have come a long way just to play lacrosse, but they say it's worth it. Both of these players travel to the U.S. because they think it's the best place to learn how to play lacrosse at the highest level. Sometimes international players are, are just kind of maybe trying to get um, you know, more exposure. Um, and, 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 and you know, here you have kids playing you know, all year round. There you might have a selected few smaller pockets. So I think they're getting a chance to play against some you know, pretty quality players. Each player took a different route to the U.S. Ansi uh, played here in Howard County at Glenelg Country School. I think he was here as an exchange student when he was a junior year. His coach, uh, Risto Worthington, the head coach at Glenelg Country, reached out to me, uh, talked to me about, um, you know, we got a, got a great player who's interested in coming to the States, um, pursuing lacrosse, um, and keeps showing at a higher level. Just contacted him and he got me over here, so I'm really happy about that opportunity. I um, emailed around a little bit and I played on this travel team last year in the summer. And one of one of the players, Coach Denise, used to play a coach in high school. I played with, and so we, we I got in contact with him over that. And when they both started playing here, they noticed a big difference between the U.S. game and lacrosse back home. Obviously, for like the speed of the game, game here is a lot faster than than back home, and it's a bit of an adjustment. Passing faster, catching the ball, shooting faster, running a little faster. It's all about speed over here. And that was the biggest adjustment that I had to make. Back home, I used to have practice with seven people at a practice, maybe twice a week if I was lucky. And here I have practice with 40, 40 kids every day. They had to make some adjustments off the field as well. The only bad thing that I've found so far is that I need a car everywhere and I have to drive everywhere. So I pretty much spend my days at home, sitting on the couch, reading books. I guess the food a little bit, because it is, is a bit different. and. Uh, yeah, yeah, like good German bread and all that stuff. I, I gotta say I miss dark licorice. I really like uh, the these uh, burrito places you, you guys have here that we, we don't have at home. Yeah, those are, those are real good. But they seem to be fitting in just fine. There's, there's so many good kids just, just on this field today that it, you, you just don't have that back home. The guys are awesome. We mesh well together. I've been here now since the fall, so I kind of got to know all the guys. So I think I fit in really well. Coach Sanisi says he is always looking for good players, and he is happy to give them the opportunity to perfect their game. For Dragon's Lair Update, I am Chris Oviedo. Thanks for watching. Tune in Friday, May 24th, for an all-new Dragon's Lair Update. And remember, go Dragons!